What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's Down and Dirty. We're going to dive back into our GPS series. I've been trying to space these out so I don't burn you guys out. But today we're going to start to cross over into points and lines and surfaces and kind of how they all interact. Because for a lot of us who didn't grow up around computers, this can get a little confusing. So we're going to break it down and we're going to make it super simple. And we're doing that because I'm a good guy and I went to my local arts and crafts store and got some of these styrofoam balls. And these styrofoam balls are gonna represent our points that we go shoot with our rover. So we've started to dive into the GPS, but for those of you who aren't so familiar, uh, when we go around with our rover, we're gonna set that rover down like we do our grade rod. Except what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit a button on our screen and we're gonna log a point. And that point is going to contain three things. It's gonna have a latitude, a longitude, and then it's also gonna have a height component. So basically, when we hit that button, boom, there's a point, and it has an exact location in 3D space. Okay, great, that's awesome, Brian. What are we supposed to do with that? Well, we can do all sorts of things with that because now we have a reference point. Now, from a very simple high-level view, we can take that reference point and we can just measure from it. And, and in 3D space too, right? So instead of like the laser and grade rod where we're only gonna get a vertical component, with the GPS, I can take this point now and I can walk over here with my rover and bloop, I can shoot another point. And it will tell me multiple pieces of information. It will tell me the distance straight line across the ground, how far away the points are. It will tell me, let's, let's make it a little more out of whack, it will tell me in a straight line from point, let me, point A to point B the distance, which is gonna be different, right? Because one is a straight line across the ground versus one is going to be distance point A to point B. Or it will also tell me the height variance. So we may have a 10 foot height variation between these two points. That's the cool thing about GPS is we can get all of that information just from realistically shooting one point and then walking someplace else with our rover. That's neat, but that doesn't really unlock the power of GPS. Where we start to unlock the power of GPS is when we start tying these points together and then start creating surfaces with these points. But that's where things can kind of get a little weird if you're not familiar with the system. So just for simple, super simple terms, we're going to create two points. Boom, boom. But we're going to tie those together with a line. That's where we've got our handy dandy skewer here. So let's skewer our points. Boom. And boom. Well, look at that. We have two points in space connected with a line. We still don't have enough information though logged that we can create a surface. You need a minimum of three points in order to create a surface. Why not four? Well, because the minimum you need is three. And then we can create a triangle, which we can then overlay with a surface. The advantage of using three points, so let's say we were just gonna make a box. It just so happens I have two more styrofoam balls here that we can use, and let's say we were gonna just make a very simple box. Give me just a second to piece this together. We now have just a straightforward box, and I'm not gonna say that's square, because it's not, but we have a box. Just ignore this. A box with four lines connected. Now, the reason we actually connect these in triangles is because if four points was our minimum, that means that this, this square can only exist in one plane, right? We can't start twisting it or doing funky things to it because how are we going to tie, how are we gonna lay something across here? And, and we'll, we'll demonstrate this here in a second, but how are we gonna create a surface to make this shape where we're all out of whack make sense? Well, the only way we can do that is if we tie it together with a middle piece, and I'm gonna have to shrink this down. Because we're on video and I'm limited on time, because you guys have short attention spans, don't lie. We know it's the truth. We're gonna pretend that that's connected. So now we have a middle line that's gonna go through here and connect these dots, which now divides this into two separate surfaces that can move independent of each other. And so we can start to get into these funky shapes. So to demonstrate this on a larger scale, I have pre-made myself a funky surface. 
So check that baby out. Isn't that nice? Woo! Look at that. That's like that's like 10 minutes of arts and crafts. Fantastic. And you're going to notice there aren't any squares. They're all divided into triangles. Because what happens here, this is cool, and it's an awesome demonstration of the crazy things you can do with points and lines. But really, the power of GPS starts taking over, as most of us are familiar, when you can start using machine control. But in order for, for machine control to work, you have to create a surface. The machine doesn't know how to interpret what it's supposed to do in this with your blade or your bucket because it's just a bunch of points and lines. It can't interpret that. So what we do is we overlay that with a surface. Now, if any of you follow our vlog series, you're gonna notice this lovely pur purple sparkly tissue paper uh, is from a gift to the Water's Edge guys. We have some left over. This is gonna represent our surface. So when we go into our rover and we say, hey, we wanna create a surface, we're gonna use these points and these lines, boom, go. What it essentially does is it goes, okay, we're gonna overlay a surface over our points and our lines. Now, it's really gonna be hard for me to get this tissue paper to be tight to where you can see it, but it's going to conform to all of these points and lines in a way that you start getting these complex surface shapes. Alternatively, we can flip this over and let's pretend that we had a, this is a ditch, a swale, this might be the better way to demonstrate it. As we lay our surface over this, you're gonna see that swale with all of the contours start to take shape with our surface. Well, now what happens is the machine comes along and I should have pre-planned this, but you know what, we're winging it. This little foam dart is gonna represent our blade. Now our blade Forget all the wrinkles, because obviously our surface isn't gonna have wrinkles like tissue paper, but because it's following all these contours, our blade now has something that it can go across and the machine can say, hey, continue to follow the contours of this surface. And because, let's take our surface back off, because we split this into triangles, we can actually follow all of these weird, funky angles and still have that surface conform to the points the way that we need them to conform. Now, really quick side note, you've probably, if you have any experience with machine control and GPS, you know that sometimes when these surfaces all get tied together, you get these funky artifacts. And kind of here's an example of one. It's not really coming together the way that you would think it is. And so that's where we would have to go modify this. And maybe we would actually raise this point virtually. We would take this point and we go, yeah, we're going to shift you up a little bit. And obviously, because this is wooden skewers and foam balls, it's not really going to work with me. But in the computer or in a digital environment, if we raise this point up, it's naturally going to take all of these connecting lines and it's going to raise them up as well. And now all of a sudden, our surface changes shape. So instead of us having this nice swale that's cut all the way down, now all of a sudden, this end is gonna raise up. And so you may have a surface that looks a little more like this. So you've got a little hump in it. That's how surfaces interact with points and lines. And I know this is a really high level, rough demonstration of how this works, but at least it conceptually gives you the idea of what we're doing when we go in and we apply a surface to our points and why we do it. Our blade cannot magically go, okay, I need to follow this across these two points, but then there's a point in the line. It doesn't know how to do it. It's not until we overlay our surface that the blade can go, oh, I just need to skate across the top of that tissue paper the whole way and make sure that the entire length of my blade is laying flat against the tissue paper. That's it. That's how surfaces and lines and points interact. So now that you kind of conceptually understand that, the next version, the next step that we go to in our series is we're gonna talk about some of the things you can do with these surfaces and some of the things you can do with points and lines on a rover that really give you the power far above and beyond what a laser and grade rod can do for you. So as always, this is a little bit more of a complex topic. If you've got questions, ask away down in the comments. We'll catch you on the next Down and Dirty.